Discover the terrifying story behind, the shocking story of the Hillside Stranglers, two cousins who terrorized Los Angeles in the 1970s. Join us as we investigate the tense real crime narrative that plagued Los Angeles. What prompted these cousins to perpetrate horrible acts that terrorized a city? Prepare to unearth secrets, agendas, and the unwavering pursuit of justice. Before digging into this spine-chilling story, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more gripping stories from the past. A chilly darkness fell upon the hills around Los Angeles in the fall of 1977, throwing the city into despair and dread. The evil duo known as the Hillside Stranglers, whose horrible legacy would forever tarnish the annals of criminal history, fostered this malicious environment. They were Kenneth Bianchi and Angelo Buono, and they went on a horror rampage that would haunt the city for months. Their macabre total would eventually reach a frightening 11 victims, all ladies aged 12 to 28. The Hillside Stranglers' reign of terror would leave an everlasting imprint on Los Angeles' collective consciousness, a terrifying warning of the darkness that may lurk in the most unexpected places. The atrocities began in late 1978 when the Stranglers dumped the remains of five young women and girls in the barren hills. The atrocities horrified officials and the public alike, but what was even more upsetting was the discovery that the crimes were committed by two malignant predators. The reign of ghastly killings ended on a terrifying day in February 1978, but not without leaving an unforgettable impression on a little community. It was a day that would live on in the mind of a nine-year-old kid who unintentionally discovered a horrible truth. This harmless trip led him and his pals to a local trash, where they mistook dead mannequins for a far more dangerous reality. The little lad approached with morbid curiosity, only to be faced with the horrifying sight of the nude, rotting remains of two innocent girls, Dolly Sapita and Sonia Johnson. Their fragile lives had been mercilessly robbed, and their bones had been abandoned among the trash, casting a veil of grief over the village. The town was shocked by these horrible killings, sparking an investigation into the warped minds of Kenneth Bianchi and Angelo Buono. The heinous alliance that would become their infamous reputation began in January 1976, when Bianchi, a disturbed man, relocated to Los Angeles to live with his cousin, Buono. Bianchi's troubled background, defined by adoption as a result of his unstable mother's instability, and his difficulty in holding a steady job, gave an uncomfortable backdrop to their horrible actions. Their narrative raises troubling concerns about the hidden causes that push people down such dark roads, leaving a terrifying imprint on criminal history. Kenneth Bianchi discovered a money-making scam with Angelo Buono that would eventually turn into a horrible murder spree. Buono, the older relative, hurt the sensitive Bianchi. Buono, who was raised by his mother following his parents' divorce, had a strong hate for women, which he took into many unsuccessful marriages typified by his persistently aggressive conduct. This animosity of women, along with the attraction of rapid money, led them astray. They collaborated on a terrifying sequence of abductions and murders known as the Hillside Strangler Killings, which terrorized Los Angeles in the late 1970s. Their homicidal scheme came to fruition when they decided to become pimps, enticing adolescent runaways they thought no one would notice. Once captured, these young girls were subjected to unspeakable horrors such as beatings, sexual assault, and incarceration. Sabra Hannon and Becky Spears were among their initial victims, but both brave ladies managed to flee. However, Bianchi and Buono's vicious impulses only became stronger following their early escapes. Their first murder was committed to get revenge on a prostitute, Deborah Noble, who had duped them. They enticed Yolanda Washington, another prostitute, and eventually killed her, a pattern they would repeat. Posing as cops and abducting women from the streets became their heinous signature. The Strangler's reign of terror proceeded in a macabre narrative that took the lives of both prostitutes and innocent women in Los Angeles. The city was transformed into a furnace of terror, with the dread of the Stranglers looming huge, their threat almost insurmountable. Even those who sought safety at a call girl service, such as Kimberly Martin, were not spared, as her sad fate was sealed when she was summoned to an appointment by two evil men who phoned from a payphone. The Strangler's story is a horrifying reminder of society's darkest corners, where weakness is abused and humanity's potential for evil knows no limitations. The heinous crimes performed by the Hillside Stranglers, serial killers continued uninterrupted until February 1978, cloaked in uncertainty as to when and how the heinous killings would end. This reign of terror, however, came to an end when one of the culprits, Kenneth Bianchi, made the tragic choice to flee Los Angeles. His objective was to start again with Kelly Boyd, 
his current companion, distant from the city's horrors. The couple brought their baby, Ryan, into the world just days after their escape, providing a heartbreaking contrast to the Strangler's final evil actions. However, the story of brutality did not end there. Bianchi's murderous impulses reappeared after his divorce from Boyd when he migrated to Washington State. He perpetrated the heinous killings of two teenage students there in January 1979. Bianchi's attempts to dodge the law were unsuccessful without the assistance of his old partner, Angelo Buono, in hiding his tracks, resulting in his eventual arrest by the police. This represented the end of one chapter of darkness but the beginning of another, as the full depth of the horrors he and Buono had inflicted became clear. Under the prospect of death, Bianchi broke down and revealed his cousin, Angelo Buono. Bianchi's effort to claim insanity during his trial failed, and he was sentenced to life in prison for six of the Washington killings and five of the California murders, while Buono was condemned to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Buono died in jail in 2002, but Bianchi is still serving his time, after marrying a pen buddy from Louisiana in 1989. His parole application was refused in 2010. The judge, Ronald George, appropriately voiced his displeasure with the regulations that stopped Angelo Buono and Kenneth Bianchi from receiving the death penalty for their horrible acts of cruelly extinguishing the lives of their victims in their search for cruel pleasure and their hatred for women. Thank you for joining us on this terrifying trip through the Hillside Strangler's horrific narrative. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel if you enjoyed this tale as much as we did. This will ensure that more fascinating real crime stories await you. We can't wait to provide you with even more fascinating stuff. Stay inquisitive and tuned in for more.